So if you've been using Windows for any length of time, you know that there are two things that are almost guaranteed. One, Windows is going to crash at some point. And two, it's probably gonna crash when it's least convenient for you. So recently I had a client that was doing regular backups, but unfortunately, the stuff that they were working on recently, they didn't get a chance to back up before Windows crashed. Now, normally if you can get to the Windows troubleshooting screens where you can use those tools to try to get back into Windows, generally everything's okay. But in some situations, that troubleshooting screen doesn't seem to help at all or doesn't work at all. So unfortunately, I wasn't able to record what I did to get that client's data back. So today I'm gonna to try to replicate that for you. So even if Windows doesn't boot, you can still get in and get that important data before you have to wipe the computer completely. And to help me out, I brought along my trusty but janky spare laptop. So in order to get that data off that computer, even if Windows isn't working, it's gonna require two separate things. One, you're gonna need a working computer, whether it is a spare or your spouse's or friends, or you could even go to the public library. The other thing that you're gonna need is an empty flash drive. And you need to make sure that there's nothing on here because it is going to get wiped. But the good news is, if you follow these instructions to the letter, you will absolutely be able to get into your computer and get that stuff back. Now, during the course of this video, I am sure that there are going to be a bunch of questions that I kind of anticipate that most people will ask. I'm going to address those questions at the end of the video, so please watch all the way through. And if you have a question that I didn't address, make sure you leave it in the comments for me. Hey guys, my name's Scott Merrill. I've been in IT for almost 35 years, and this channel is all about Windows tips, troubleshooting, how-tos, all kinds of stuff Windows related. Additionally, one of the things that I like to do on this channel is give novice users recommendations when they're not sure what to get. So if you're interested in me guiding you to find the right product, click that link in the description, send me that form, 100% free, I'll do my best to point you in the right direction. Okay, so the very first thing we have to do is we have to download a utility. This utility is going to create a bootable flash drive that basically will give you access to your computer, and in which case you can get in there and get your files but we have to download and create it first. And again, remember what I said, you're gonna need a blank flash drive, completely empty, nothing on it, because it is gonna get wiped. So the utility is called Hirens. Now, I have been using this for years. Techs across the world have used this. It's a trusted resource, so you can absolutely be safe in downloading it. But we have to download and create it first. The website is hirensbootcd.org. So open up your web browser and go to that page. When you get to that page, you're gonna see a download link at the top. You're gonna to click on that and that is gonna take you to this page right here. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to scroll all the way down to the very bottom where you see hbcdpex64.iso. You're just gonna click on that file and it's gonna to begin to download to your computer. Now this is a really large file, I believe it's about three gigabytes, so it's going to take a while, and if you have a slower internet connection, it could take even longer. But just be patient and let it download. Now while the ISO file is downloading, we have to download the utility that takes that ISO file and creates that bootable flash drive. What you're gonna to wanna to do is go to the very top of this window and you're gonna see USB booting. Click on that and the very first instruction is to download Rufus. So you click right there where it says download Rufus version 4.5 or whatever the version is that's on that page. Just click on that link and go ahead and download that file as well. Now once the Rufus file has been downloaded, just go ahead to your downloads and click that and it will open up that program. So if you've plugged in your flash drive, it should recognize it right there as your first device. Now in this case, I'm using a 64 gig flash drive, but I'll address that later in the video. If we follow the instructions, the next step is to press Alt E to activate dual UEFI slash BIOS mode. You don't need to know exactly what that means. Basically, it just makes it compatible with most computers out there so that your computer can boot to this flash drive. So just hit Alt E on your keyboard You'll notice at the bottom of this window, it says dual UEFI BIOS mode enabled. And that's all you have to do. So the next step in the process is to select that ISO file so that we can create this disk. But if it's still downloading, you're just gonna have to wait. Now, once that file has downloaded, as you can see here, it's completed. We're gonna open up our Rufus program again, and then we're gonna select that ISO file. Right here under boot selection, you're gonna click select to the right, and then you're gonna select that ISO file, that three gig ISO file that you just downloaded. Just double click it or select it and click open. And now you can see under boot selection, it's got it listed here as the ISO file to load onto this flash drive. 
So the next step in the process is to create the partition scheme so that the drive knows how to format properly and it can be recognized by your computer. In this case, it suggests using MBR as the partition type and file system as FAT32. So under partition scheme, I just leave it as MBR and for file system, I'm gonna change it to NTFS because pretty much everything now can read NTFS. If you have an older system, you might wanna try large FAT32, but go ahead and just select NTFS to try it. Now here under volume label, I'm gonna give it a friendly name, in this case, flash drive, so that I can easily recognize it from within the environment that I boot to. It'll make more sense once you actually log in and understand. Now, the very last step to create this disk, and again, make sure this is an empty drive, is to go to the bottom and click start. It's going to tell you, hey, this is about to be wiped. Are you sure you wanna do this? If you're sure, go ahead and click okay. And then it's just gonna start creating that disk. You might get a couple pop-ups like this. That's because the drive has been formatted and the partitions that it creates pop up on your screen, just like plug and play. Just ignore those. You can close those if you like. You can watch the progress down at the bottom here. And what it's doing is it's writing programs to that disk. So again, it's a pretty big file, but it shows you here the progress meter at the bottom. So just sit back and wait until it's done. Now, when it's done, you should see a green ready button right here. And at that point, you can just click close and your drive is created. And at that point, you can go ahead and remove that flash drive. And then what we're going to do is we're going to plug it into our computer that isn't booting into Windows. OK, so you have your flash drive plugged into the non-working computer. Go ahead and turn it on. And then what you're going to want to do is you need to boot to that flash drive. So depending on your computer, you can use one of the function keys, F1 through F12, and that will allow you to change your boot order. Or you can go into your BIOS or system setup and change the default boot order to that flash drive. Either way, the whole point is that instead of booting to your normal hard drive in your computer, you want to boot to the flash drive. So whichever function key, like if you have a Dell, it's going to be F12. If you have a Lenovo, it's going to be F11, I think. So if you're not sure, just do a quick Google search for which function key to change boot order, followed by the name of your computer, HP, Dell, Toshiba, whatever. So once you have done that, you've turned your computer on, you've selected that boot menu key, that should then give you the option to select that flash drive. And then once you've done that, just hit enter and then let it boot up. Today's video is sponsored by Aura. Your odds of winning a lottery jackpot? About 1 in 290 million. But some people still play their favorite numbers every week expecting to win. Your odds of your house burning to the ground? 1 in 3,000 but you pay every year for homeowner's insurance, just in case. Your odds of having your identity stolen or being a victim of online crime, one in four. Let me say that again so it sinks in, one in four. And even though you spend all this money every year protecting everything else in the world, what are you doing to protect yourself against becoming a victim of online crime or identity theft? Unfortunately, a lot of people don't think about it until it's way too late, and that's where Aura comes in. And myself being a victim of identity theft in the past, trust me, that's a battle you do not want to fight. Data brokers sell your information to spammers and scammers. Your full name, your address, your phone number, health records, your relatives, it's all out there for the picking. We hear all the time about companies getting hacked and data breaches and all of that. AT&T just recently released that 73 million customer records were released on the dark web. And they recommend using strong passwords, monitor your account activity, and consider credit freezes or fraud alerts from the credit bureaus. But who has time to do all that? I know I don't, but Aura does. Their system shows me which data brokers are trying to sell my data and then automatically submits opt-out requests for me. They also protect me against hackers who are trying to get into my social media, bank accounts, and other personal information. Aura does all of this with just one app. To find out more, sign up for a two-week free trial at Aura.com slash AskYourComputerGuy and find out for yourself what's really out there with your name on it. So before we get started, I apologize for the quality here. Normally I can do a video capture with my capture card, but unfortunately in Hirons for some reason, it doesn't want to capture the interface. But as you can see, this basically looks like Windows. And the cool part about it is that you can access those files that are on your computer from this Hirons disk. And all you have to do is just make sure that you have a big enough flash drive to hold all your stuff. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. Now, if you look at the bottom of the screen, you're going to see a manila folder, very much like a Windows file folder. You're going to want to click on that, and then you'll see it'll pop up with 
these drive letters, which in this case, your drive letter that you're trying to get data off of is drive C. That contains all of your stuff. And you can see the file structure here. There's the Windows user folder down at the bottom. All of that, that's where your data is. Let me get my big head out of the way here. If you also look all the way to the right, you can see here, this is the flash drive. Now, in this case, I got a 64 gig drive because I roughly know about how much data I have to get. We'll talk about that at the end of the video as far as what size you need. Okay, so from this screen, all you have to do is double click on that C drive to access that drive that you're trying to get into. And when you double click on the C drive, scroll down until you see the users folder. That is the folder that contains all the Windows profiles for your computer. And then when you double click on that, you'll see the folder name that matches your profile name. So if, for example, your login name was owner or Scott or whatever your login name is, you're going to double click on that folder to access your documents and all that other stuff. Choose one of these based on which user profile contains your data. So for example, if you have a username and your wife has a username and your data is stored under your profile, you're going to want to double click on your profile, not hers. Hope that makes sense. Most people are going to just have one user profile. Either way, just to be clear about that. So once you double click on your user profile, you're now going to see all your default folders, desktop, documents, downloads, pictures, music, videos, all the stuff that is in your Windows profile. And the easiest way to do this is just scroll down on that left side. You can see that flash drive here, which in this case is drive Y. All you have to do is just right click on any of these folders that you want and choose send to, and then flash drive, in this case, drive letter Y. And just like that, it's going to start copying all of that stuff to that flash drive. And if you look down here, you'll see that there's now a desktop folder because I just copied desktop. Same with documents. Now there's also a documents folder and music, pictures, video, all of the folders that you copy are going to end up just being copied onto that flash drive, just like you would with any other drive, whether it's a flash drive or an external or another hard drive or whatever. It's just a storage drive at this point. But the most important thing is that those files that you couldn't access, you now can using this disk. So just go through and right click send to flash drive for each of those folders that contain the data that you need. Or if you don't want to copy the whole folder, say for example, you have files in your documents folder that you've already backed up, but maybe there's a couple that you haven't backed up. You could just go into that folder, select those individual files, right click and send to the flash drive. The most important thing is that you now have those files. Now it's just a simple matter of copy the files and wait for them to finish. If you've gotten this far, congratulations. You finally got your stuff off a non-working computer. Now I did make a video a while back about how to actually take your hard drive and split it into multiple partitions and store all your data on that second partition so that you never have to deal with this again. And if Windows crashes, it's no big deal. You just reinstall Windows and everything that's on that second partition is perfectly backed up and safe. I'll put a link to that video in the description for you. You definitely want to check that out. Now, again, it's not a perfect backup solution, but it does give you the opportunity to kind of automatically back up your files, but I would still recommend an external backup. Either way, it saved a lot of people a lot of headaches. Now that you have all of your stuff safely backed up to the flash drive, now you can wipe the computer, no problem, because you've got your stuff already backed up. You just backed up the files that you didn't back up previously, and now you can start over fresh. Now, there's a few questions that you might be asking. First question is, are these files safe to download? Your antivirus may or may not trigger when you download these files, specifically because of how they operate and what's contained in them. Don't worry, they're 100% safe, I promise you. Techs have been using this Hirons forever. It's perfectly safe. Your antivirus may trigger on that Rufus. Just be aware that if it does, it's okay to mark it as safe and continue as I showed you in the video. It's perfectly safe. Second question is, how big of a flash drive do I need? Well, a lot of that depends on how much stuff you need to get. If you haven't backed up a ton of stuff, then you're going to need a bigger flash drive. And as a general rule, you can't really go too big. It's better to have more space than less space if you have to get those files. 
I'll put links in the description to some flash drives that I recommend. For most people, I'd probably recommend anywhere from a 64 to 128 gig flash drive to do this process with, simply because you may need to back up a video that is 20 gigabytes and if you don't have a big enough flash drive you're not going to be able to so it's always better to go a little bit bigger it's going to cost a couple dollars more but it's probably worth it again i'll put those links in the description for you you can just click on them and have them ship right to your door the next question you might be asking is what if the hard drive is bad and you're trying to get data off of it well unfortunately it depends on the drive if you have a older traditional hard drive a mechanical drive with the spindles and everything you might be able to get those files off of it it might take a little while because hiren still has to access those files on that drive just like windows does and if the data that you need is in a bad spot on the drive you may or may not be accessible but it's certainly worth it to try it if you have an ssd drive and it's dead Unfortunately, when SSDs die, they just jump off a cliff. They don't even give you any indication. So it's certainly worth it to try. If you see that C drive, when you boot to this Hiren's interface, then that means that there's a good chance that your data is on it. And another good way to tell is that if your computer's booting up to these blue advanced troubleshooting screens, that means that it sees Windows, but can't load it. And if it sees Windows, then that means it sees a drive. So that's a good indicator that the drive is probably okay and the problem you have is just a Windows problem. So again, it's absolutely worth it to at least try it. It cannot hurt. Those are probably some of the most common questions that people might ask, but if you have another one that I didn't address, make sure you leave it in the comments. So now that you have your data backed up, now what do you do? Well, you have to reinstall Windows. If you don't have a recovery disk and you don't know how to do that, I made a video walking you through it step by step, very similar to what we just did today, but you have to go download a Windows Media Installer. And if you have all of your data backed up, you have a Windows Installer disk, you will be back up and running in Windows in just a few minutes. I'll put that video right up here. Hope it helps you out. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one.